Um, just want to get started because we do have a lot to get through. Um, roll call. Sorry. Chair Running here. Vice Chair Swarzy. Member Solman. Here. Member Chaplin. Member Desarge. Member LeClaire. Here. Okay. All right. So we do have a quorum. Um, and public comments. All right. Great. So uh, good morning, everyone. Today we are going to hear the Community Services Budget presentation. I think many of you are going to be encouraged to hear the proposal of increases in salaries. So. As we all know, community services plays a vital role in residents to many life changing social services, and it's really one of the most important functions I believe that we do in DuPage County. So I'd like to say thank you to our committed staff that's been there day in, day out for residents through a pandemic, and they're always there for people when they're confronting some of life's biggest challenges. So thanks, thank you to this committee and our board members um, for your input over the past year, speaking up oh, time and time again in favor of raises for some of our staff to support recruitment and retention. It's a step in the right direction, and I think uh, these conversations are going to continue. I did want to bring up, um, make note of the Veterans Assistance Commission Annual contract is up. Uh, I'd like to thank Steve Fixler and all that do the work in support of our DuPage County veterans. A recent change in law now requires, uh, in addition to filing federal VA claims for veterans and families, requires the back to take them to appeals as necessary. So to fulfill these needs, the back is proposing hiring a veteran service officer, and I hope you'll support this engagement. Um, thanks again to Steve and all. And with that, I will ask for a motion to approve the minutes of Tuesday, so, June 21st, 2022, with a motion and a second. Any additions or changes to the minutes? Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Those minutes. Moving to community services, uh, I'll take a motion to approve FIR 301-22 resolution acceptance and appropriation of Illinois Home Modernization Assistance Program, $803,400. Motion. Second. 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 Thank you. Uh, questions here? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That passes. I'll take a motion on FIR 307-22, resolution of acceptance and appropriation of LIHEAP for 2023, $2,006,892 new services. Second. A motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That passes. I'll take a motion FIR 308-22, resolution of acceptance appropriation for uh, RTA. CY24 Community Services Grant 591,000. So moved. And motion. Second. 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 All right, great. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That passes. I'll take a motion FIR 310 22. Acceptance appropriation of HUD 2021 Continuum of Care Homeless Management Information System. So moved. 188,006 Community Services. And second. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. That passes. I'll take a motion on HHSR 304-22 resolution recommendation for approval and in governmental agreement with County of DuPage and Veterans Association. Motion, motion and a second. Questions, comments here? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Please. Take a motion on HHSR 309-22 resolution approval of issuance payments by DuPage County to energy assistance providers for the IV state grant. Two million five hundred twenty-five thousand seven hundred ninety dollars. So moved. A motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Um, we do have some additional information on the change order at G. Does anybody have a copy of that? Yeah, you have it. Yeah, if you want to, I'll go. I'll go. Page on the top. Read it. Just didn't hit the computer for some reason. Um, but I will take a motion on change order HHSP six A dash twenty two. This is an amendment to resolution to HHSP 6 22 issue to outreach community services to provide job skill training to low income youths to increase incumbents in the amount of 30000 resulting in an amended contract total not to exceed $115,600. Second. Uh, motion and second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 That passes. Thank you, Karen. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take a motion on HHSP. 223-22, recommendation for the contract to DuPage Federation on Human Services Reform, Language Access Resource Center. So moved. For interpreters for face-to-face -face and telephonic translation and American Sign Language Human Services, primarily for the Senior Services Unit, August 13, 2022 through August 12, 2023. 
that to exceed 45,000. Second. Any motion and a second? Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. That passes. I'll do my question on HHSCO 19 22, uh, Amendment to County Sub Grantee Contract issued to Team Current Connection through the FY22 CSPG after the purchase of diapers, formula, car seat, staffing time to assist low income county residents to increase the encumbrance assembly for the amount of $25,000. Good motion. Second. We have second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That passes. Moving to the DuPage Care Center. I will take a motion on HHSP 224-22, recommendation for approval of contract to Jones Healthcare LLC for the rental of fluid emergency simulation matches for the care center August 9, 2022 through August 8, 2023, not to exceed 40,000. motion and second questions here. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye, thank you, that passes. I'll take a motion on HHSP 225-22. Recommendation for approval of contract to TAB Textiles Company for various loans for the care center August 10, 2022 through August 9, 2023, not to exceed 60,000. So moved. Motion and second. Questions here? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Great, great. Passes. I'll take a motion on 2022-61. Recommendation for approval of contract to ARXIEN Inc. for supplies for the gas pack elite medication dispensing machine for the so county care center. August 16, 2022 through August 15, 2023, not to exceed $26,500. And this is a roll call vote. Right. I'll check that a second. Roll call. Member Chaplin? Aye. Member Desarge? Aye. Member LaPlante? Aye. Vice Chair Swarzy? Aye. Member Selman? Aye. Chair Renahan? Aye. Great, that passes. I will take a motion on 722-2022-62. Recommendation for approval to Bob Barker Company for a very summons to the care center, August 10, 2022. Second. I'm back to 20,000. Motion and a second. Um, Member Desart? Aye. Member LaPlante? Aye. Vice Chair Swarzy? Aye. Member Selman? Aye. Member Chaplin? Aye. Chair Renahan? Aye. Okay. And moving to 73, um, item 2022-63, uh, I'll take a motion for recommendation approval to contract to Kronos Inc., a UKG company for software support services. So for the Kronos Automated Family System Knowledge Pass for the Care Center, September 28, 2022, through September 27, 2023, not to exceed $24,007.32. We got a motion. Is there a second? Do they have food? Yes, yes, yes. I second that. Yes. yes, thank you. Questions? All in favor? Aye. And to know the roll call. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Roll call. Thank you. Okay. Vice Chair Swarzy? Aye. Member Selman? Aye. Member Chaplin? Aye. Member Desart? Aye. Member LaPlante? Aye. Chair Runhan? Okay. Thank you. That passes. Moving to Veterans Assistance, Assistance Commission. <laughs> I'll take a motion. On FIR 302-22, Resolution Revision to Personal Budget Veterans Assistance Commission 1000-1600. We have a motion and a second. Questions or comments here? Uh, I just want to say Well, I, I and, and uh, I just, you know, I said, I just want to mention that I sat through um, Steve Bixler's presentation at the last BAC meeting and very, very informative and very, very important. Um, some of the statistics, and maybe this isn't the right place for this, but um, under VAC, so I'm going to bring it up here. But um, you know, you have three full time staff. They're looking at adding one um, and also increasing the pay. Um, Steve gave uh, comparables. I think, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe Lake County has nine full time staff. We have three. Kane and Kendall have six full time staff. We have three. Um, the salaries. At those other in those other counties are, are much higher than, than what we're paying our guys and for a county this size and uh, uh, I think the number was somewhere around thirty five to forty thousand veterans and spouses in our county um, that were helping with three full time staff is is, is not positive <laughs> we need he needs help and we need to get him the help that he needs so that's, that's my thoughts. Yeah, Thank you, Chair uh, Renahan. I'm not on this committee, but I am always interested in hearing about where we're not taking care of our employees. 
and and servicing our constituents as well. So is one enough? Is you know the addition of one person in this department is it enough? So that's my question. And I think there's a lot of ongoing discussions um, with Cheryl and some of our uh, staff legislatively because the Military Veterans Assistance Act does place more requirements and also allows them to levy a tax at some point if they want to. So I think I can answer your question. More conversation. Okay. I can answer. Oh, please. Okay. First of all, you guys have covered us enough and everything like that. All right. And second of all, adding this one person now, looking down the road, three, four, five, six years, maybe we do add another person. But um, I don't think we need two right away. Adding one, if we do need more, I'll come back to all you guys. You're still here four or five years, but uh, <laughs> and then add it, add it somebody else. So we've got to project down the future of what we think we'll need. Right now, we need one more person for right now for the next couple of years. If we do need somebody else, if we have to expand even more, then we just come back to you guys. And, and at the rate of pay that will be offered, are you going to be able to attract a qualified candidate? Based on um, the comparables that I did with the four counties, I was told to use McHenry, Will, Kane, and Lake. Lake. Um, I think so. I honestly think so. How many veterans are in DuPage County? About, we're figuring around 45,000. So you said 45,000. That does not include the spouses, though. Oh. Okay. So if you okay. include the spouses that we take care of, maybe 70, 80,000 that's, that's clients. That's a big number. Okay, yeah. 70, 80,000 clients that we can take care of. But adding the person um, will help tremendously. That person's going to specialize in filing VA claims and going to the appeals process. Yeah, that person will also learn what we do in the office, though. I cross train all, all everything, but they will specialize in the in filing VA claims. We also are required to, to do public aid out of the office too, general assistance and state aid. And I know I've said this, a couple of you guys read an earlier meeting, I'm not looking at hiring a full-time person for that, maybe a part-time person on a case-by-case -case basis. And we're also expanding our office, what we call four squares, towards the window. And uh, Tim has already, me and Tim have already worked up a plan. He's already got the, the diagram and waiting to start knocking down my wall and move it and everything like that. Thank you for what you do. Um, so comparing, talking about what you want to, you do now and what you would like to do and comparing it to the other counties, can you explain how you're able to do it with such large, large numbers yeah. of clients and right such now. a, re, correct, with such a reduced amount of staff compared to the other counties? Okay, we have the Illinois Department of Veterans Affairs right next door to me. Mm -hmm. So he usually takes care of all the federal VA claims. Mm -hmm. That's who's been doing most of it. He has now got a list this long every day, all right? So when we add the fourth person, we're gonna cut his list down. We'll take half of that. And not only that, but he does not do house calls. We do house calls. Right, so I'm saying, um, how is it that you are able to do this with such a truncated staff? We're, we're, not, to... we're not doing a lot of VA claims. Yeah. Is, 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 am I answering what you mean? No, so I'm saying, um, kind of piggybacking on what member Rutledge is saying is it seems like that discrepancy in staffing, maybe one is not quite enough. Obviously, it's not enough. Not. We're not able to do it. Um, adding only one. Adding only one will help tremendously. And I think right. it'll be enough right now to do that. Is there a reason you don't want to add two or more? That's all I'm asking. Oh, because um, I think right now one would be enough. And I don't want to add two. I really haven't thought that far to add two. I was just thinking right now to add one over the next few years, if we knew need somebody else, then I would go with that. That was just my um, long my long range thinking was adding one right now, seeing if we need another one or not. Two or three years, if we do need another one, then we would add it. So instead of adding two at one time, I was just thinking of one. That That's just my thought process. It's just going for one and seeing what would happen. Okay, is, is that answering what you mean? And everything? Sort of. And I just hope that if you're finding it's not, that you come back as soon as possible because yes. that's, oh, yeah, that's what we're trying absolutely. to say is to make sure that you are adequately staffed absolutely. because this is such a large county and such important work so that if you do feel sooner rather well, than later. I mean, I, we can look at that and see what happens after we hire the next person if that person's overwhelmed completely. Um, and then I definitely can come back. Now, expanding the office, we're adding two different, two more offices though. So physically wise, if we added another person, we've already got the space. So I talked to Tim and said, if you can do one, can you just do another one? 
His answer was yes, but we're gonna do it right away. We're not gonna come back in next year and do it. So yeah, I can add in a second person and I do have the physical office space to do that. So again, I was just thinking one at a time. And if it were too short and then we need some more, then I can still come back and, and get it. And and office wise, we'll be ready for it. Okay, is that what is that what sure. you're doing? And like I said, I do think this is part of a broader conversation because really the Veteran Assistance Commission is now can become their own taxing body. And that's why I think there's there are changes to come. So I do appreciate everyone's questions and concern. I know we're all support the work we do, and I think that we're gonna see an expansion there. Yeah, you know, we are gonna see expansion. The tax levy possibly, all yeah. that stuff. I gotta learn all that stuff, you know. <laughs> you get to learn. All right. I have enough trouble learning what I need to know now. So do what you to wish know for. if we're able to levy it or because it says like under the county code, like is this a home rule thing or is it do we know or is it's it like a, a future the new thing? state law yeah. military veterans assistance act? I would refer you to probably talk to Cheryl. Sure. Oh, okay. wait, what was the question? Or, just whether or not because we're not home rule, and so the way it's written in the legislation, it just it's referred to the county code. And so I don't know if it's saying all counties can levy or all counties can levy if you're allowed. All the ACs can levy if they want to. Not the county. Regardless, home rule doesn't matter. I guess so. They're all up now. This is not a new law. This is the same law that was updated. Okay. Well, it still goes back to 1895. Okay. And it's been updated again this year and everything like that. And I was also told that the county board can authorize the tax levy, that I don't have to go out for a referendum. That's what I've been told too. So I'm still learning a lot about that. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Under the microscope, I think at this point. So um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. Uh, I'll take a motion. FIR 303-22 resolution authorization transfer so to the Veterans Assistance Commission for fiscal year 2022. $9,998. Motion second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. That passes. I'll take a motion on budget transfer 9A, moving funds to the general fund capital to remodel existing VAC space to accommodate the so additional headcount. Second. 75000 Motion and second. Questions here? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That passes. I'll take a motion on budget transfer 9B, transferring money, monies from building improvements to maintenance supplies to cover materials for fire panel upgrades. They were originally ARPA dollars, so, and now we are told they are not compliant, so charging to correct line and at $36,789 per year, sir. Do a motion? Second? <laughs> Second. Second. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? I think a motion on 10A authorization for overnight travel for the finance account to attend the PY 2023 MEP assistance policy and procedures workshop for Fly Heath in Springfield, August 15, 2022 through August 16, 2022. So $628.80. Motion to second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Yes. Should this be, should that be PY? I mean, apply? Why is it PY? What does P mean? Program year. Gotcha. Thank you. Take a motion on uh, travel request 10B, overnight travel for the community. So, so we have to attend the final equipment of commerce economic opportunity. Round table. Thanks for the book. $531. Please our tents. August 17th for CSBG. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Take a motion to combine all the consent items so on A, B, C, D, E, and F. These are all to increase and close because the contracts have expired. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. So I'll take a motion to approve 11A air gas, uh, $14,156.66. 11B prescription supply ink, $112. $1,171.25. 11C, pyramid supplies, $17,513.11. 11D, QS1 data systems, $17,224.74. 11E, red sale technologies, $13,062.21. And 11F, warehouse direct, $67,073.63. Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Excellent. Um, I'll take a motion to receive and place on file. Grant proposal notification so, 41-22, 2021 Continuing Care Program Competition Planning Grant, PY23, $155,478 for community services. Okay. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That passes. And I'll take a motion on 12B, Grant Proposal Notification 44-22, Section 5310, so, uh, $191,000 for community services. In a motion, in a second, yes, all in favor? Uh, Aye. The second was oh, Solomon. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. All right, that passes. Uh, residency waivers, yes, we do that. Good morning. Hi, Janelle. Hi, good morning, everyone.
We have two residency waiver requests this morning. Um, there are currently 22 male open beds and 39 female open beds at the care center. Four have already been offered to DuPage County residents. So no residents, DuPage County residents would be displaced by these um, applicants. Our first one is an 88 year old. The applicant is looking for admission into the care center. They lived in DuPage County in Villa Park from 72 to 95, in Willowbrook from 95 to 96, from Winfield to 96 to 05. The children currently live in Bartlett and Naperville. All three work in DuPage and the applicant volunteered for the Board of Elections and Census Bureau during their time in DuPage. Motion. Second. Second. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Any opposed? Thank you. Um, that passes. Janelle, the second one. Second one is the, the resident or the candidate had not lived in DuPage County before. However, the children live in Carroll Stream for 18 years. The applicant's spouse will also be moving to Carroll Stream um, and local family look forward to being able to visit and bring the spouse to the care center. Um, the family's been very impressed with the care center in comparison to other facilities they were in in Cook County. So we ask um, for your uh, approval of this candidate. I make a motion to allow. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, great. Thank you, Janelle. Those are approved. Um, Thank you. Can you give us a, a short Absolutely. Update? You bet. Um, we currently have two units under isolation. We did have three. What we're seeing in relation to COVID is staff positivity rate, especially, especially if individuals are going to weddings, graduation parties, funerals, out-of-state travel. We're seeing that in an uptick. Um, so we do have uh, uh, units that go on. It, uh, isolation related to potential exposure from a staff member. Um, however, our number of residents that have been positive uh, as a result of that has been extremely low. So I think that's a great credit to the PPE and our diligence in um, making sure that our staff that end up being positive are not exposing um, our resident population. So um, any questions on COVID before I move on to two other items real quick? Uh, member Solomon and then Member Sir. Thanks, Janelle. Um, just to make sure I understand, have the regulations changed? So if you have cases, you can still admit now? Because you said you're still admitting. Yes. Good. Yeah. Well, that's yes. nice. All right. Well, yeah. thank you. <laughs> Hi, Janelle. Thanks for the update. Um, what is the um, policy with our staff when our staff contracts COVID or tests positive for COVID? Are they asked to stay home for absolutely days? Yeah, absolutely. And it, it depends on our current status. There's been so many changes with broad-based testing versus unit testing. So that um, is an algorithm in and of itself that our director of nursing manages very well. But yes, if our staff come in and they have symptoms, they're immediately tested and sent home and not allowed within the building. So we're still screening everybody that comes into the building very extensively. For how long? How long are they asked to stay home? Um, it depends on symptoms and it depends on testing. So um, it varies. Thank you. All right, great. If there are no more questions, thank you very much, Janelle. I'm anxious to get to our community services update. You bet. Request. Oh, oh, a couple more things. I'm sorry. I just wanted to say real quick that we're uh, meeting with finance this week. We're finalizing our budget, so that will be coming to you um, August 16th. And then we're also uh, finalizing the slide deck for our uh, DuPage Care Center renovation presentation to all the board members. So more to come. Thank you. All right, excellent news. All right, moving on. Um, Mary, I'm sorry that we're starting so late with your presentation. Okay. Um, I have a for him. Thank you, Jen. Presentation takes anywhere between 10 and a half and 12 minutes. That's <laughs> All right, timer. <laughs> Um, you can go to the first slide here, Tom. Um, so as many of you who've been through this with me before uh, know, I do like to start my um, annual budget presentation with some context setting um, so that, to open the discussion. So the Department of Community Services is supported by 21 different uh, funds. There are two general fund budgets, one special revenue fund, and 18 state and federal grants. Those budgets combined for a total department uh, FY22 budget of just about uh, $23.5 million. Um, about 12% or 2.7 million uh, came from the general fund. From a, a staffing perspective, 
About 14% of our total payroll is supported by the general fund. Next slide, Joe. So what the prior slide in, in terms of budget did not include is the uh, all the additional funds that we've managed over the past two years. Because I really want to talk about sort of our normal funding levels when I get to the discussion of the 2023 budget. Um, but I think it's absolutely important to acknowledge the work that's uh, been taken on since 2020. Um, the $100 million represents tens of thousands of households that received food or rent assistance or help with their energy or water bills. Additionally, dozens of nonprofits were able to protect, purchase personal protective equipment for their clients and staff or upgrade their IT equipment to provide services virtually or restock their food pantries for um, essential commodities. We also used funds to provide over 1,200 people <clears throat> with emergency shelter, totaling well over 200,000 individual nights of shelter. Now, many of these funds um, have been exhausted, but um, many will also continue through 2023 and beyond. Next slide. So while the general fund makes up around 12% of the community services budget, I wanna point out that the percentage of the general fund that is allocated to community services has been dropping consistently since 2016. In 2015, the community services total general fund budget was just over $4.5 million, which represented 2.79% of the general fund appropriation. By 2022, our general fund budget was down to 2.7 million, or 1.42% of the general fund. There were two significant actions that created um, some of this drop. The first is that in 2018, the board approved the transfer of the psychological services division over to the health department resulting in a savings to the general fund of over $900,000. I had recommended this action for two primary purposes. The first was that the health department has the ability to bill Medicaid for the, for the behavioral health services that were offered by psych services, thereby creating a sustainable funding source. And the other was to allow more general fund dollars to be directed to other areas of need in community services, specifically the senior services budget. <coughs> The other major reduction in general fund support was in 2021 when the Human Services Grant Fund was shifted to the larger ARPA funded program we developed with the DuPage Foundation. I think it's important to note that even though community services had an increase in its general fund allocation in 2022, that still represented a drop in the percentage of the general fund that is directed to us. Next slide. So now turning to the specific requests by fund. Um, you were each provided with the spreadsheets that have uh, all of the detail um, line by line requests, but I'd like to highlight just the major variances in my 2023 uh, budget request. Um, first up is uh, first up is 1,017.50, which is the largest of the uh, two general fund budgets. In this fund, there's a total increase of approximately $235,000. It's most important to note that 150,000 of that is actually a budget neutral request. For many years, the county has provided $150,000 grant to the Northern Illinois Food Bank, but it was accounted for in the finance department budget 101180. This year, the finance department is moving uh, many of those expenses into departments where the uh, that more accurately reflect where the activity belongs. So although there is a $150,000 increase to the community services budget for this activity, there is a corresponding decrease in the finance budget. <clears throat> the other increase of just under $100,000 would be uh, towards our salary line item. This increase will allow us to fill a long vacant INR position as we anticipate more calls once 211 is launched. It will also account for the salary offsets we've seen as many of our staff and management team have been able to charge time to some of the COVID related grants over the past three budget years. As those grants expire, we'll need to return to charging more time to the general fund. Next slide. What's INR? Information and referral, intake and referral. Uh, next, uh, next is the Family Center budget. Um, I'll start by pointing out the Family Center is supported by three funds, the general fund, the neutral exchange special revenue fund that I'll discuss in a minute, and a federal access and visitation grant. The 2023 budget request for the Family Center General Fund includes a re request for one new headcount. This new position would be a manager to oversee the neutral exchange and supervised visitation programs. <coughs> Those functions currently fall under the direct supervision of the Family Center Administrator. Adding the new manager would provide better supervision for the neutral exchange and supervised visitation programs. 
It would increase the amount of direct service that could be provided by adding weekend capacity, and it would free up the administrator to focus on growing services, including expanding revenue producing activities that we need to um, expand upon to ensure the sustainability of the family center. Next slide, Joe. And then finally, the neutral exchange fund includes a modest increase that's due uh, just to the different salary and benefits of the new administrators, uh, as well as some IT equipment um, for the proposed new manager. Next slide. So those are the three requests that I submitted to finance at the end of June. But since then, with the encouragement of Chair Renahan, I've uh, really been taking a look at the staffing issue, uh, specifically our staffing shortages. Um, I've brought this up many times here. Mm -hmm. We currently um, have 142 staff on board with seven new hires in process. We also have 15 positions that are currently posted for recruitment. I should add that I pulled those numbers last week. So today they're probably slightly different because literally week to week, um, we're just in constant flux. Uh, in the last 12 months, we've had 31 staff leave the department. The majority of those were in our case management and intake referral positions, sort of not surprisingly, those are our largest um, categories of staff. Um, and I should note that those 31 are separations from the county. So I, what I did not include were internal movements, internal transfers, promotions. Um, we love promoting people internally, but it just sort of um, expands the amount of time that, that we have that vacancy. Um, the vacancies that we're experiencing have real consequences. Um, for example, even though we processed more MyHeap applications than we did the prior year, and we provided $7 million in client assistance, we know we could have done probably about $3 million more had we had the staff, had we been fully staffed for the entire program year. We've also had really unacceptable wait times and call abandonment rates in intake and referral on days when we've been extremely short staffed due to vacancies and due to staff being, being home due to COVID. Next slide. So I've spoken in the past about the challenge of provide, trying to find good market data for the positions in community services. There's no other county in the region that serves as the Seniors Care Coordination Unit or the Community Action Agency. Uh, the Community Action Agency is, is the program that brings us CSBG, LIHEAP, weatherization, um, Oak Park Township is a, is a CCU and the city of Chicago is a, is a community action agency. Those are the only two public entities in the entire region that serve in, in either of those roles. Next slide. So um, I was able to find uh, uh, some very limited data to use as comparables for our staff, but I did find a couple here, one from Oak Park Township, one from the city of Chicago. But I think the best one is the um, 2019 data from the Illinois Department of Revenue, Illinois Department of Employment Securities. Um, there's a job code called Eligibility Interviewers Government Programs. I think that's probably the best job code I've ever seen that, that kind of gets to what we do. Um, it shows a range starting from uh, 39,000 annually up to 62,000. And I think that range really kind of represents our direct service staff from our level one INR all the way to our highest level case managers. Next slide. So I, what I did was create a um, revised hiring salary schedule that takes into account that market data. It would raise most positions within INR and case management between four and five thousand dollars annually, which, depending on the position, um, is between an eight and twelve percent increase. Given the total number of staff in each of those positions, the total impact would be approximately $355,000 per year. Next slide. So the various positions we're talking about in INR and case management are charged to nine different grants, uh, nine different budgets. Some of the grants can absorb these increases and a few cannot. For 2023, I think the only funds that could not absorb the increase would be the CSBG grant and the general fund. You'll note that in the chart I've indicated for seniors, I've said yes for 2023. The seniors budget is pretty, it can be pretty volatile as it's dependent on the rates that the uh, state sets each year for reimbursement, um, along with um, our, our staffing levels. The seniors unit is funded with a combination of grant allocations and fee for service programs. So when we're down staff, we're also down revenue. So although I'm comfortable that the seniors budget can absorb these increases for 2023, um, it, would, it would need to be evaluated on an annual basis going forward. 
So the bottom line here is that in order to proceed with an adjustment for these critical staff, I think I believe I need around $49,000 in the general fund to cover increases for the general fund and CSBG positions in intake and referral and case management. Also, if the committee is in favor of moving this forward, I'd like it to take effect during the 2022 budget year due to the impending launch of 211 and the upcoming live heap season, both of which really require full staffing in order to be completely successful. Next slide. So to summarize, the community services budget request as submitted includes a net increase of $171,495 to create a new manager position, fill a long vacant INR position, and reflect the reduction in COVID grant salary offsets. This is a net increase of 6% after the budget neutral food bank grant is accounted for. If the uh, salary increases I just outlined are then added in, the budget request would include a total net increase of $220,675, an 8% increase. So as you can see, even with the full uh, $220,000 increase, the community services budget would remain lower than our pre-pandemic level and about 35% lower than it was in 2015. With that, I'd be happy to take questions. More of a comment. Um, the staffing shortages. I think we all probably believe that it's a, it's, a, it's a major issue. And, you know, this is something for our most needy people and to not have staff. $5,000 raises roughly starting, I think is, is a good start. Do you think that's going to be enough? Um, in sort of Chatting with my management staff, I think we feel that I think we're pretty comfortable at that level. Um, if we uh, if we fill it in 2022, then we're you know potentially looking at COLA for 2023 as well. Um, so it'd be a little bit more than that. Um, I think we we have to we have to have some basis for establishing those salary levels. Um, so I think, you know, an, I, an, an INR level one is a position that is, um, does not require a degree. I think we ask for two years of college um, or relevant experience. Um, and so that position, so it's a pretty entry level position. So that, that level, that position would be about $41,000 as a, as a peer entry. If they have other relevant experience, or if they're bilingual, the salary goes up a little bit more, but that would be our base level. Um, I think our management team was pretty comfortable at that level. Our case managers then are, you know, our, our adult protective services and those really highest level positions would be up, I think, in around the $60,000, dollars 58 60 something like that. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty comfortable that that's, you know, I guess we'll see how it goes. Um, I think it's a, uh, I think it's a reasonable um, and I think this no. committee absolutely has to approve this request and, and also appeal to the rest of the board to, to get this done. You know, Mary, when you said that, you know, you could have given out $3 million more, right? That's like, oh, mm -hmm. right to your heart, right? So I think it really is important that, you know, I keep saying we're a service organization. Mm -hmm. So if we're not paying our people, we don't have the people to provide that service, we're not doing our jobs, right? So mm -hmm. I think it is really important that we, you know, seriously consider what you proposed and yeah we can't we have to do it if we're, if we're not giving out money that we have right and that there's a need especially <clears throat> right yeah it's so important so thanks I, I really appreciate this great presentation and good work thank you member Rutledge thank you chair um one of my biggest frustrations serving on the board these last four years is the fact that the people that take care of the people that need us the most are the least paid took us three years to, to complete the contract at the care center. And I've heard from you over the last three years that you're chronically understaffed. And uh, to me, that's, well, I won't go there. But um, so I, I wholeheartedly would um, approve what you're asking for and, you know, give you whatever it takes to get your department fully staffed because those people need us more now than ever. And uh, like Liz says, we're a service organization and we're not helping those people. Um, I get frustrated that it was like, oh, we've kept your property taxes low for you know forever. 
but they didn't tell the truth that it was staff that paid that price for not making adjustments in our property tax rates. So, um, well, one, I'll just say one of the things I appreciate about sort of the process that was introduced last year is that there is um, there is a concerted effort and there, there's basically there's a placeholder every year to and a, and a timeline to say we're looking we're going to look at salaries as part of the budget process every year rather than a sort of catch as catch can you know is this a good time to ask is that a good time to ask um, yeah. that is going to be included in the budget discussion so um, I think um, I think having that sort of regular opportunity to have that conversation with the board I think is a really good addition to our budget process. I'm sort of piggybacking on what you're saying there is if you find that this is still not sufficient, mm -hmm. then you can come back faster mm -hmm. and ask for a dip more, right? A budget increase because right. it doesn't help anyone. We've talked about this a million times because being understaffed does, doesn't only hurt, obviously, the constituents and the people who are being served, but it causes, I'm going to guess, the higher rate of burnout and a higher rate of turnover. Staff are tired, that's They're for sure. They're tired. <laughs> so they need um, basically, you know, um, they need the cavalry to arrive mm -hmm. to relieve them. Because then otherwise what we're doing is we're asking too much of staff during a very, very, very difficult time. Yeah. And as we all know, you know, there's a lot, we don't know what's coming this coming year, what it'll look like. Mm -hmm. So whatever we can do to help, but also to keep that, um, I really like to think of it as not having a lid right now. That you can come back. I think the, the good is exponential, right? We can reach more people and do the thing. You know, when I said to Mary, when we were having this conversation, it's like, if we don't get this done, we failed. I failed personally. And, you know, I think we all want to reach as many people as possible. So, do we have consensus on this committee yes. Um, yes. to support this budget? Uh, thank, you. thank you very much, Mary. Excellent job. Yes, yes. Yeah. always. Thank you. Right. Um, do we have any old business? Um, I did want to bring up, um, you know, the transformational grant with the DuPage Foundation. I know some of you had seen some pictures out on social media that they had presented a check. I was not advised of any of that. Um, I think going forward, there is, I think you've gotten some emails about some photo ops mm -hmm. or some checks being um, put out there. So everybody is welcome to do that. And I think there's also a conversation and when the big grants come up, the next big ones, there might be some kind of a meetup or something or a presentation. So I just want to make sure everybody feels included on that. So um, is there any new business? All right, I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.